It's time for another week of Every Day We're Covering. CP and SJ with you once again to talk sports and wagering and to have some fun with you here on the program. I uh, hope you had a good uh, weekend. It was uh, a busy weekend as far as uh, things that were available to do and watch and see, and uh, the sports world was certainly part of that. Lots of stuff, actually, especially in our area, region of the country, there a lot of things that were going on, actually. Um, and, of course, part of that, CWS rocking in full force there over in Omaha. Uh, SJ, I know you got a chance to at least to kind of experience the atmosphere a little bit over there, and it's uh, you know certainly never... Really doesn't ever disappoint. There's always uh, lots of things going on and lots of characters to see over there. Yeah, there's always uh, an interesting story or two to come out of that, and some <laughs> good time, like we said, like always. Uh, probably touch on the games later, but yeah, definitely uh, did some sampling of the of the local uh, soda pops and uh, had a good <laughs> night out. <laughs> all in all, not too bad. If you can. Re- recollect most of what went down and say you're doing pretty well <laughs> yeah that's that's par for the course uh, <laughs> as we get rolling speaking of that uh, we always uh, have a little uh, you know lubrication as we do the program here as well and uh what do you got pouring over there sj well i'm i'm back on my uh Ying- yingling grind there buddy <laughs> I, like i said uh spent some time there in omaha down, downtown there so uh kind of hit the the local ones like, decently with the uh, you know zip line cross train uh, even a hit a Kincader tap room. So I figured after all that adventurous uh, night and weekend there, I uh, just go back to the old reliable Yingling. But I'll uh, I, I was hoping to maybe hit a you know hit a local spot, and give me a sa- sampler pack or something, but it didn't end up happening. But uh, we'll we'll get back to something a little more adventurous next week. But had to kind of play it cool after a. Uh, you know, when you get to a certain age, you can't weekend like you used to weekend. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little longer to to recover, <laughs> and you just don't have that don't don't just don't have that same motivation anymore to get right back on the the horse, so to speak. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had that buffer day in there for sure. Yesterday was a was a pretty pretty solid water day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta get that hydration level back up. Uh, I am uh, sampling one from down your way here. Uh, the fine folks at uh, Boulevard Brewing Company. Uh, it's their Southwest Boulevard, the lager with the salt and lime. It's always a kind of a good one to sneak in there. I kind of like that that mix up every once in a while. Those have been hot as shit lately too. Like that's yeah. that by tastes amazing. Yeah. Day, like, <laughs> the, I mean, we've been. I'm sure the same thing. In the 90s and the humidity is just as unforgiving as that. So yeah, it's a definitely a refreshing one on a day like this. Yeah, yeah, and get, yeah getting a little of that salt in there too. You got to replace the electrolytes. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> trying almost to counteract a health, it's almost a health drink yeah. yeah this is almost like a, a sports drink here yeah. uh, well i mean for... it might be better with all the sugar in some of those but <laughs> that's true then uh so yeah that's what we've got pouring down here this week and uh we uh of course we'll yeah continue to sample and and, and peruse all the different fare again if you have suggestions we are very open to trying to track stuff down so let us know uh, if you have something you think we uh, need to try here especially summertime i think uh, like we i said last time you get some more varieties and some more experiments going on with the breweries it seems like during the summer so let us know what's happening in the area we'll be happy to try to track some stuff down uh, as we get into the program here, we will uh, touch a little bit on uh, CWS a little bit more. We'll also, of course, talk uh, what's going on finals time. We've got another gambling story to talk about as well uh, that we'll touch on here in a moment. But we'll start with the baseball since we already kind of alluded to it here a little bit. It has been a very entertaining College World Series so far. Uh, folks were interested in the baseball. It has definitely lived up to its billing. Almost, you know, really couldn't have read a bit, wrote a better script for the folks that organized the tournament because all of the opening round games were one that came down to the wire uh, even the one that got delayed a long time had a, a nice finish and ending deep into the night there in Omaha so uh, overall I think uh, the folks that have uh, run in the show got to feel pretty good about uh, the competition they've gotten this year yeah I mean you kind of said it right there couldn't have uh, you know scripted it out any better and just with the level of teams that made it it was kind of it's a little bit chalky for maybe what you know just a general observer wanted but at the same time, then then you just the kind of results you might get when that happens. Not always, but um, I don't. You know, every you, not only have they been close, they've been like a little bit maybe higher scoring than in previous years, and that's kind of what you want for to to increase your audience. Of course, you're gonna you know the diehards and the the team fans of the team, and then the ones that are just baseball, you know, a baseball guy or gal, whatever, however you want to term it, they're gonna watch no matter what. But to kind of to build that you know fan base of just someone that maybe 
starts tuning in on a yearly basis or even, you know, making the trip up there, try to get to a game. That That's kind of what you want. Maybe, you know, not too crazy. We, we don't need no 14, 12 games, nothing like that. But, <laughs> you know, five, six runs, seven run games. I mean, that's that's kind of, you know, I, I know for a traditional, it's probably a little high. But I think for me, someone that's, you know, don't I'm, I don't mind baseball, but it's not exactly my, one of my favorite sports. I wouldn't say that, but that's more the game I'd like to watch. So I think that kind of plays into that as well. If you if you don't have like a team in the hunt, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's it's funny when you get the perspective. I had was sitting down watching some of that Kentucky uh, NC State game there for a while, and my son. Uh, you said something about, oh, that, I don't know, that game would kind of be boring to be at. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like three to three. Like this is, you know, and he's right. like, well, my team scored. Yeah. Well, in Little League, yeah, yeah you scored 10 <laughs> runs and it's because, you know, you walked five guys like this is different. <laughs> so, yeah, still has been very entertaining. And, you know, even in that game was awesome because, you know, NC State got a lead and then Kentucky came right back, hit a home run to tie it right away in the bottom of the ninth and then got the, the win that they needed at the end. So uh, there's been good stuff. Uh, so the way the bracket kind of sits right now, uh, we have had uh, some things, of course, that are still going on yet here this evening. But uh, Tennessee has won a couple of games, so they're on into that game, uh, kind of awaiting who's going to meet them then in the loser's bracket to try to determine if there'll be another game necessary there on that side of the bracket, the bracket one. Uh, so they picked up wins over Florida State when a really close high scoring game and then beat uh, North Carolina uh, six to one to advance on into that game. So North Carolina and uh, Florida State are set to play in a contest tomorrow afternoon that will determine who gets to play uh, Tennessee then on Wednesday afternoon. And then uh, the other side of the bracket, uh, it's uh, Kentucky and Texas A&M who are playing here uh, this evening. And then uh, the uh, game that will be going on then uh, tomorrow uh, evening will have uh, the losers bracket how that set up so it was uh, uh, Florida who beat NC State earlier today they'll be in that game and they'll play uh, the loser of that game that's going on right now either Kentucky or AM. and uh, so that'll determine how that side of the bracket is set up so uh, that's how it looks right now there in Omaha and of course there'll be games then uh, those next two evenings and then it'll determine whether or not they have games uh, later in the week. So the Thursday games would be the, the if necessary games. And then they start the uh, best of three championship series on Saturday and could go all the way through Monday. So that's how the, the schedule plays there. Uh, but uh, yeah, certainly has been very entertaining. Uh, I think, you know, Tennessee is obviously one of those teams that still looks uh, very, very dangerous as far as the offense is concerned. And that's what everybody's been talking about. They, they've hit so many home runs throughout the season and, and through the postseason, especially uh, they're just such a power hitting team. Uh, it was interesting to hear the guys on the broadcast the other night, kind of talk about them a little bit and say, you know, they, they're, they're, getting close to touching some records from an old LSU team that they kind of thought would never even be touched. And then, you know, the fact that not only they have guys that can hit for power, but they've got guys that maybe don't play all the time that can come in and hit for power. And that's a pretty big luxury to have at that level of baseball. Yeah. I mean, to consistently do it is what's kind of really just, especially with the, you know, all the adjustments made with the bats and the balls and just even that field when they, you know, when they first opened, there was, like hitting a home run was like, you know, this waiting for the eclipse. Like it, it wasn't happen very <laughs> yeah, often. Yeah. Now people just, you know, left and right. You know, I, like I said, I know there's been adjustments made and things have changed, but even still, like just to consistently do that is not something easy to do when you're going up against, you know, the best pitching that, that the, the game has to offer. So that would be, and just, you know, kind of just, uh, you know, some that stood out to me as the series as a whole so far is just kind of all the, I don't even want to say questionable, just like the, the game changing or like so many of like those big moments we've had already. And there's only been like, you know, within the first four or five games, there's been so many, you know, big calls and, you know, re replays and, you know, bad calls, that, you know, certain coaches, but, you know, a lot of teams have still overcome that, but just kind of the drama that's already been there is, has kind of made it just that much more of a interesting series, let alone the offense on top of that. But just, there's been so so many, like every game, there's like just something kind of that you don't even probably haven't seen all season long. And you're just seeing something like wacky every game. It's I'm, it's interesting to me. I think mm -hmm. that kind of takes a little bit more of a you know more of, kind of more of an attraction as just you know as someone just watching and kind of wanting to see something that's a little bit a little bit dramatic and interesting. Yeah, good entertainment value, no doubt about that. It's been it's been fun to watch, and hopefully it'll continue to be that way here as we head down to the the end of it. Um, the other thing I noticed was an interesting theme that they keep talking about too, and it just it's obvious once you're hearing about these rosters. 
um, that, you know, the trickle down effect of, you know, the whole world of, uh, you know, transferring and guys being mm-hmm. able to leave has really affected that sport a lot. I mean, a lot of these guys have come from other schools. You know, they kind of maybe got their look at a small school and then, hey, here's my opportunity to go play at one of these premier type programs, you know, and, and have a better chance to end up in this moment and play in Omaha. Uh, and they one thing that they, they brought up that I thought was kind of interesting because I think it's so much different compared to the football situation because you know the football thing as we've talked about maybe at the end of the day almost kind of spreads things it out sometimes because guys want opportunities to play and there's a lot of schools that put a lot of resources into it because it, it drives money and revenue now baseball is one of those sports where you know a lot of schools may not necessarily put a lot of money into it they, they it's there and it's it's a program but they might not go all in and they were kind of saying you know if you're not one of those schools that goes all in at this point Point, you might be in trouble because a lot of these kids are going to go to these programs now where they know they have that opportunity to play in this moment in Omaha. Yeah, and, you know, there's always the the, the deal of, you know, weather and kind of that, that plays a big factor as too, as too with the sport being, you know, if you're somewhere where you have, you know, nice weather, 7, 8, or warm enough weather to play outside, I put it that way. I wouldn't necessarily call it nice always, yeah. but, uh, you know, seven months of the year, you definitely have a, a distinct advantage. But, I mean, you got some of these schools that do, you know, have programs and, they might not even have their own field or their own facilities. And, you know, they're, so of course, if somebody has got, you know, a, you know, a, a state of the art or even just a, a nicer complex that's kind of dedicated to you, uh, you know, what school are you going to pick? So, uh, yeah, this would be more of instead of, you know, bringing it together, which I think was probably the intention of, you know, doing the NIL and the portal type of stuff. It might, you know, kind of do the opposite in this case, like you said, just kind of making that divide that much greater, because if you do have the money to spend and, I mean, some of these schools probably are pretty close to, if not, you know, actually making some money off their off their programs. Just when you see the attendance numbers and mm-hmm. that thing, I mean, that's kind of what, you know, obviously that's that's the the baseline of making money is, you know, you, ticket sales. Of course, you know, you have your gear and licensing and all that on top of it. But just for the sport in general, if you if you got a, a full stadium, you know, 40, 45 nights out of the year, that's uh, probably going to be a good thing for your budget. Yeah. Something to keep an eye on for sure in, in other sports, you know, as this continues with the portal, because, yeah, we might see some trends that are different from, you know, one sport to another. So that'll be so, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, the one thing probably to watch, too, I mean, we to pay attention to, of course, in the fact is that the roster spots are a little bit more limited so that, you know, in, in the long run, that could be a little bit challenging for these schools that are just kind of in the early going, just throwing some money at these kids and kind of convince them to come play for their team when, there might not always be a spot there unless, unless you know, you are a team like Tennessee that kind of throw a lot of bats in there or do, do a lot of pinch hitting and that thing. But at the end of the day, I think probably still want to as many reps as you can, as much playing time as you can. And there's only, especially with baseball, it's not like there's substitutions every, you know, couple minutes. There's no clock. There's no, you know, like yeah. you st- you pretty much stay in the game for unless you're hurt or, you know, pitching, having a bad day. So it's not like you're uh, spreading playing time around more than just the starting lineup in that sport. Yeah. And that's true. Yeah, maybe it's just a time thing. We'll, we'll see this kind of draw out. Maybe it'll come one way and then go back the other after a while. So uh, be be something to watch and keep uh, keep our eyes peeled on. Uh, as we move on into some other sports, uh, the finals time, of course, we've been talking about what's going on, uh, both the NHL and the NBA. And I'll uh, start in the NBA because uh, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. But as we're recording here, uh, it looks seems uh, very likely that the Boston Celtics are going to end up uh, closing things out and winning the NBA Finals championship, which I think a lot of people at this point maybe thought was coming. You know, last game was interesting. You know, the Mavericks obviously laid it to them, but it was one of those where, you know, are they just going through the motions here with Boston because they want to go back home and win it on their home court? You see that sometimes, especially when you have a, a huge series lead to start with. Uh, you never want to do that, I think, as a professional, but uh, I think there definitely was something to that last game because it just didn't seem like the Celtics had a whole hell of a lot of effort put in uh, to that last game. And, of course, a team that's desperate, like Dallas, is going to play harder, too. Uh, that changes things. But uh, if, for, for the most part, uh, you know, the Celtics have just been able to find a way to kind of control the narrative in the series and, and kind of neutralize the guys that they needed to neutralize at certain times in order to, to come away and it looks like win this thing. Yeah, I mean, the the, kind of, the two games, I think, with two and three, they, they, they let get away, really, or, or Boston found a way to win, whichever side you want to look at it. It was kind of told the tale, I think, after that. It was obviously with the 3-0 lead, of course, that's easy to say that. I mean, it's a done deal. But even before then, just losing that game the way they did is one of those you could see kind of just 
it doesn't just go away because you have another game. You know, it's kind of kind of hang with you, linger around. It's more of a like a like kills your spirit type of thing more than because I mean they played well enough to win in both of those games and lost them both. So that's just kind of one of those de- demoralizing things. Uh, you know, desperation I guess was was probably a lot of the story. But I do think it was kind of a thing like where and they knew not not saying they came in the game wanting to lose or trying to lose, but they just kind of they didn't really show up at, yeah. all the way, you know, kind of like you said, kind of going through the motions, half-assed it. So, um, of course, you're not going to say that, but uh, th- that 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 had be <laughs> that had to be a part of the equation at least somewhere because just to go from what we saw the first three games to see, you know, that I mean that was that wasn't even like competitive at no, all. I mean, yeah, sure. I know Dallas played well, but the, Boston like played the opposite of that, you know. So it wasn't like. Because even if Boston would have probably played like they did the first three games, they probably would end up losing by, you know, 10 or so points. But yeah. uh, it would have at least been competitive. That, that wasn't that at all. But, yeah, it kind of seems like, uh, like we said, you know, nothing, you know, it's not done dealing, but uh, about as close as we are right now. And looks like um, basketball season will officially be over here in a few, <laughs> what, about a, maybe an hour and a half or so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, that'll, that'll come to a close here on us, it looks yeah. like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, of course, there there was a little bit of controversy too at the end of that uh, into that third game. You know, where you you had the the comeback kind of co- going pretty g- darn good there for Dallas. You know, I, I even had texted you a while before that saying, you know, the Mavericks are toast, and here they come charging back, and it's yeah. like, well, maybe I spoke too soon, and they damn near pulled the whole comeback off. But you kind of just felt like I mean, there's so much to overcome. There's gonna be something that just you know ruins this at some point. And some may say it was, you know, officiating a little bit because there was a couple of controversial calls that could have gone the other way that maybe kept that, uh, you know, comeback going a little bit more and maybe they win the game. Uh, but uh, ultimately, there were some big shots still hit by Boston after those calls too to, to make sure that they got the job done and, and won the game. But, uh, you know, in those uh, things like that are going to happen. You're going to have those moments where the call doesn't go your way, and especially when it's something like that where it's those block charge situations. Um, you know, it, it, half the people are pissed, half the people will agree. You know, so it's it's sometimes so hard to to call it that way. And, it, and unfortunately, I think that's it is a little bit of a part of the game that does disenfranchise some people from loving it because you do see a lot of that in the league. You know, there's a lot of like just low on your shoulder and trying to run through a guy and get to the rim. And that was kind of just one of those moments where he made up his mind. He's going to try to go through, you know, Doncic there. And, and um, you have some of those and it's, it, it's tough on the officials. I don't, I don't envy that decision and those calls at all. Uh, but unfortunately that's sometimes how the game's played. Yeah, to me, I guess um, probably just the, the biggest thing is when you're so reliant on one player. Just if, if it's if something's not going right, it just can can really fall apart. And we thought, uh, honestly, I thought Dallas had a better supporting cast, but uh, maybe it just wasn't to be the case. Because of course, every team's going to have a star, and you know the guy that's more, you know gets the points or more known for it. But I'm not. I mean, Tatum hasn't exactly been amazing this series, and they've still Boston's actually looked better when he maybe hasn't scored as much. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I think maybe this, they weren't the, the, I mean, what do you want to call them? The, the, you know, role players, the, the, the bench, even just like the, you know, uh, Brown and the white, just kind of like the, you know, the, 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 the number two and three players are maybe a little bit better uh, or were a little bit bigger part of why they had so much success this year. I mean, don't get me wrong. Tatum had the numbers all year, but uh, it was a little bit more of a team team concept going on there than maybe was just like meets the eye there. And uh, I think that's just the difference. Just they, um, but I, I believe, I mean, as far as I remember, maybe I'm remembering wrong, but I think we kind of talked about that in the lead up in the preview. It's uh, what, you know, who who's going to kind of step up consistently and not just rely upon, you know, somebody scoring 45 points every night, because especially in the finals and even in this league, it's unless you're like just, a, you know, e- even the, the best of the best, that's that's a lot to ask for somebody to do at night and night, especially in a series when, uh, you, you know, kind of, zeroed in on one opponent and really, really, you know, studying that film and kind of coming up with different strategies. It's really, that's a lot to ask. And for that to be kind of to carry you through is, is, is it's kind of something, uh, it's not, not really, uh, it's not a foolproof plan to put it that way. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hard, but you know, like we need, we need 40 points, you yeah. know, 10 assists and, you know, seven or eight rebounds. Like yeah. that's a, <laughs> yeah. that's a hell of a load. No pressure. No pressure at all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You're right. The and the the yeah the the next tier guys have been much better for Boston in the series overall and more consistent at least. You know, yeah, they, I know they kind of that talk early on was like, where the hell is Kyrie? What was he doing? Then he did step up and have one good game, but it hasn't been consistent. It hasn't been there every night. So, I think I mean to to me at least, and it's just uh, it's like the the me versus you me versus the fan type thing has been much too much of a like you just focus on the game like yeah. to me i think that's got letting that get to him wanting to do too much instead of just like playing your game doing what you're going to do the numbers are going to come about i think it's been a little bit too much of you know getting distracted by that uh wanting to like kind of you know stick it to stick it to the the boston fan base so bad i think that's to me it seems like it's taking him out of his game yeah you, you let your actions speak is what you, sometimes you need to do and he hasn't yeah necessarily done that um, so in a, in a similar fashion, the, the NHL finals, unfortunately, have kind of gone the same way. Uh, we had, uh, the uh, first three games and I was just, I'm, I'm, I was floored that Edmonton lost three in a row, especially the first one coming back home to Edmonton. Uh, that night I thought there's no way in hell that Edmonton's going to lose this game with the, the way that fan base is so fired up and the way that, you know, ready to go. And, uh, you know, the stars that they have on the ice, you know, it's not just about the, the support they have. It's, it's the cast of characters. You, you expect them to play well. Um, and they have not. And, you know, it kind of got, you know, st- uh, stung one against them that four, three game. They, they made a nice little rally there at the end of that third game, but just didn't get over the hump. But then finally on Saturday, it's like the floodgates opened. You know, you, what the hell happened? Like, I, I didn't even get the TV Let turned on. Let some of those on. goals out. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even get the TV turned on, and it's like 4 1 already. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, they woke up finally. Uh, 8 to 1, the final. And of course, you know, it has to be after we've lost faith that these teams are going to be able to rack up the goals like we thought they would because of the stars and right. the goalies playing so well. Oh, yeah. And then they go ahead and score nine combined total <laughs> goals uh, in Saturday. So it's been a hard one to predict for sure. I mean, anybody that's been on the wagering side of this thing, uh, I feel, feel for because we've been there with them. But. It's been pretty hard to predict, and 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 I still don't know moving forward. I mean, it's 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 a hell of a task to come back from three games down. Uh, but if there's a team that has the players to maybe make it happen, it's it's this Edmonton team, I think. So uh, this 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 next one will be very very interesting because they do go back and they're there to sunrise, and that, that makes it a little tougher. But if Edmonton gets that one, then you start to get the thoughts creeping a little bit. Yeah, it seems like one of those setups. Uh, whether you know wh- whether it be an NHL or even a you know a, a basketball series, whatever you know, it's seven game series. You can think of it. if they if they get that you know that game game on the road there, you almost bank on going seven after that because it, you would it'd be hard to see them lose game six at home mm-hmm. after two in a row. So uh, it's kind of like one of those deals. Obviously, this isn't telling anybody anything they don't know. But if Florida, you know, be they you know be behoove them to just go ahead and finish them off there if possible in the next game but uh if not uh, well at least we'll have a couple more uh games of of uh nhl to bet on there because <laughs> i could see i mean i always gonna go six but seven will almost be a, a guarantee in my but you almost book that in there yeah well and maybe it is a little bit of that same you know uh, amnesia a little bit there for florida that you know game to clinch it like ah, we'll go back home and get it done you know kind of thing so who knows but uh, i think this one's got a lot more potential to be you know interesting i guess uh, so to speak to, to potentially have some sort of a little bit of rally here uh, for Edmonton. Uh, so we'll we'll watch and, and we'll uh, see what happens that next one coming up uh, tomorrow night uh, there on Tuesday night uh, there between the Oilers and the Panthers at 7 o'clock here our central time. So that's what's going on there in the uh, Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, we also uh, did here over the weekend uh, have uh, we, the, the stuff we don't normally talk a whole hell of a lot about, but I did want to mention it just real fast. The, the U.S. Open uh, Roy McIlroy just had a kind of an epic meltdown in the last few holes to, to lose the tournament. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau ends up winning the uh, the tourney there, and uh, uh, a couple of interesting, I think, storylines that have kind of have come out of that. Uh, if you follow golf at all, uh, of course, first was you know Rory's kind of you know struggle. He hasn't won a major for a long time. Still considered to be one of the best golfers in the game, but just can't find a way to to close out and win those majors, and. You know, he goes up there and misses a few short putts. And the before the one he missed uh, there on, I think it was on 16, 
They said he had made 496 of 496 on the season from that distance or shorter, and then he misses it in the biggest. You know what's going to happen, right? When they said that, too, I'm sure. Like it's almost just like, yeah. Uh, and then he misses another short one at the end uh, on the 18th, and uh, you know, and DeChambeau makes a great shot from the bunker and get him so close to get the putt to win it. Uh, so, you, you, on one hand, you feel bad for the guy that you know kind of let it piss down his leg, and then you feel good for the guy that you know came back and made the shots to win it. So, uh, it's one of those kind of uh, I don't know catch 22 moments there a little bit, but uh, interesting. I you know. That's one of those things, I think, in that game especially, when you've got just so many eyeballs and it's such an individual thing, you know, and it's so mental. The game is, has so much mentality involved in it. That, that I don't envy that spot. I don't know that I would. I'd probably hit it in, in the damn clubhouse. I don't you know what would happen, but that, that, that shows you how tough those moments are, I guess, when somebody does that. Well, I mean, I understand it's uh, going to happen. It's not exactly like my cup of tea or is nothing I'm interested in, but also just, you know, all the – the personal stories that have been out there for him. It's just like, damn dude. Like, I mean, <laughs> of course I get, you know, this it's people who guys are interested and want to know as personal life. I mean, that's I, even if even sports I follow or teams, I like that. That's not really anything I'm interested in unless it's obviously something that somebody's doing that's affecting their players. And you know, that's a different story, but uh, I mean, just th- that, I, I, I mean, I know whatever seems like whatever's getting worked out, but at the same time, it's like that has to be, I mean, affecting your, your play, you would think, I mean, it's not something you just forget about. I'm sure on the course he's locked in, but still like is, is, is his life is a little bit, uh, been, uh, you know, up, up and down a little bit. So, uh, you can imagine like the, this, the mental, you know, wear and tear that he's been going through. So, uh, that, that, that timing of that too had to kind of just kind of, kind of make that collapse seem even that much more, uh, unfortunate and just kind of like, God, you got to feel like real, feel real shitty after something like that. And then I know there was, uh, seen some clips about, you know, people, he kind of, they were, you know, claiming he dodged the interview or didn't stop to talk. I'm like, I, I mean, I, I don't know what their requirements are with, through the PGA and all that stuff, but unless it's like, a you know, a scheduled press conference or anything, like a media availability like that, I don't think that, I don't know. To me, it wasn't anything that was like a big deal. Him, I mean, I wouldn't have stopped and talked. I mean, yeah. I mean I'm like, I'm, it's like a man on the street. Like, why would you? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm, you know what the you know what the questions yeah, are going to be. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like we know yeah. the answers too. So yeah. Well, yes. we saw the memes. You don't have to ask him how he feels. You <laughs> yes. know how he feels. Yeah, like exactly. Same yeah. way you would feel. Like yeah. freaking. Yeah. <laughs> the other interesting uh, side story of, the, of this uh, is that you know Bryson DeChambeau for a while there was kind of a. A chided guy, a lot of a lot, a lot of people didn't like. You know, they were on kind of Brooks Kepka's side of their little fake feud there. They had for a hot minute, and um, it turns out they're you know pretty close friends now. Really, it looks like. Uh, but it it does appear that he really has made like a concerted effort to be like you know an open available guy. Like they talked about all weekend about how much time he took out with fans for signing stuff and you know stopping and talking with people and that kind of thing and you know just kind of being a, a good representative for the game of golf. And uh, he certainly has won some people over. I think you know they and they, they were really cheering for him too when he when he won the tournament. So interesting when a guy I guess you know that situation can so to speak kind of reinvent himself a little bit the other uh topic i did want to throw out there this is not something that we really uh we don't talk about much and i i will say i know absolutely zero (laughs) percent about but i did get to have to give a little shout out to the fine folks over at the iowa speedway because the first ever nascar cup race was ran in the state of iowa this past weekend the iowa corn uh 350 uh, they, of course, have had some indie races there for a while already, and that'll be another big weekend coming up later in the summer. But uh, they did finally get their NASCAR Cup race, and uh, fans showed up. It was packed all weekend uh, for all the races. Uh, Ryan Blaney ended up winning the race there, and the NASCAR won on Sunday night. But, uh, you know, hats off to all those folks. You know, Rusty Wallace, I know, was the guy that kind of led building that track to begin with and uh, had a vision that eventually they would have races like that there, and now they've been able to do it, and it looks like, from the success that they had, at least getting the crowd out, uh, that they'll probably get one. I'm, I'm thinking year after year from here on out. So uh, good for them. You know, it's always cool to see when you know somebody has a vision for something and is able to execute it, no matter what that sport or entertainment thing may be. Well, and just giving also places that haven't had you know certain events like an opportunity to kind of see the sport because I'm sure with you know anything, there's fans of everything everywhere. So uh, mm-hmm. more access, the better. Like we always say, and. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, downloading the app or anything. You just go sit in your seat there and uh, 
hear all those loud noises and enjoy the day. <laughs> <laughs> loud noises and left turns. Yep. <laughs> uh, having some good times. Yep. Yeah, they had uh, a good weekend there. Uh, the one story I wanted to touch on here before we finish things up, uh, you had sent this to me here earlier. Uh, Major League Baseball, once again, uh, involved in another uh, gambling uh, investigation. This time, though, involving an umpire. Uh, Pat Hoberg has been uh, supposedly disciplined by the league. They're not really telling us any details yet because he has uh, gone ahead and uh, appealed the decision, saying that you know he hasn't been in violation of anything that they're claiming him to. But uh, apparently back in the preseason, they started looking at some guys, and he was one of them. Um, and they claim that he had made some bets. Uh, kind of the, the league's, I guess, standard policy, so to speak, is if you bet on games that you're involved in, you're getting that lifetime ban, like we just saw with the, the you know gentleman there that played for the Pirates and Padres. And then if you bet on baseball in general, games you're not necessarily involved in, but baseball, uh, then you're going to guarantee to get yourself kicked out for a year at least on uh, a suspension. So that's kind of the guidelines they've set. Uh, so we don't know what they're – throwing out there for this guy yet but he's claiming that he didn't bet on baseball he's like i've always been you know up to you know up to snuff on that sport because it's something that i love to do and whatever uh but obviously there's there's something going on here and uh we'll eventually find out but uh we just continue to to see these types of stories pop up yeah i don't i mean i just don't think like we said with the other cases there's still the details are yet to come out but for for them to go through with a suspension and i, I believe he hadn't hasn't uh, umpty game this he hasn't been on the field this season during the regular season because it's like a spring training when the, the yeah. investigation started so um so yeah i mean that's i think there's something there to i don't think that's they're gonna you know totally find him you know didn't do anything because that'd be a hell of a lawsuit um i would think coming from his and i don't think the league would want to risk that uh, bad pr there um so I'm, I'm sure there's something that went down whether he was involved or how how he was involved in what he was doing that, that that's yet to be determined but you know, when we talk about the story, we kind of think like, all right, might be the last one. And then another one pops up, another one pops up. And it's like, well, might have to end up becoming like a weekly deal. If someone just keeps getting, you know, I, just like we said before, we've talked about, you know, kind of our thoughts on it and what, you know, what this, you know, our, what we what we would assume, you know, but th the thought process of why you wouldn't or would or would, why you wouldn't do it. I say there's no reason why you would. Um, but I guess it's just going to keep happening. We'll just keep talking about it uh, when it pops up because it's, uh, I mean, it's not, I mean, I guess you just, you know, with the numbers of people is on in this country, of course, I guess it's gonna, yeah. it's bound to creep up, but it's still just, uh, the risk reward, risk reward is just always the thing that we just keep coming back to. Just, it's not, if you were that good of a gambler, you wouldn't need to be umpiring games. You could just go, you know, <laughs> pop up in Vegas, you know, and get you a little, you know, yeah. uh, spot up there and just, you know, start making money hand, hand over fist. So, uh, Otherwise, uh, it's, you know, just like one of us, just for recreation, just, you know, don't bet on baseball if you're involved in that sport. If you can't bet, just, I mean, there's all stuff we got to do with our jobs we don't want to do. Just, yeah. if you don't like it, get another job or don't do it. I mean, you have two options. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I guess we're, we're kind of working on the levels here. You know, we've got, uh, obviously, we had the whole situation with Tim Donahue in the past, so it's not like the first time officials been involved in something. But, uh, you know, yeah, we've got the ump, we've got the players, uh, we've got the the translator, uh, right. we've got yeah, the... Yeah, we have the college players, <laughs> or amateurs, I yeah, guess, if they're still yeah. called that. We've yeah, got, we've, college oh, we're missing players. like a Little League, you yeah. know, a Little League scandal or something. Uh, <laughs> Pop Warner. Yeah. <laughs> we even had the coach in the college baseball thing. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we need some GMs. We need some, uh, maybe some broadcasters. Who knows? Maybe well, get them involved. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know one that he used to, he didn't hide it very much. That's true. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. He's out of the yeah, game now. You were now, looking but... live very often. Yeah, he didn't hide it at all. <laughs> But yeah, maybe uh, yeah. maybe some graduate assistants there at the yeah. college level, and you know, a couple, maybe a, a trainer or two, and just uh, we'll have every base covered. Yeah, we're gonna get there eventually, I think. Uh, the, the the little side deal to this though too is that the fact that he's a pretty well regarded of umpire, I guess. I was reading the story, you know, it's like he's known for calling a perfect game. They said back a game two of the World Series in two thousand. Uh, 22. So it's not like he's bad. You know, a lot of people All think right. he's great. So that part of it kind of sucks. They're going to lose a guy that's actually good at it. <laughs> well, and that was the thing too. And I was kind of, you know, just doing some looking up and seeing what, you know, some research and seeing like, you know, kind of, does he have like a track record of bad calls or does he, you know, have controversial calls or questionable. And honestly, like you said, it's kind of an up and up. So he just was, I don't know, maybe mm -hmm. just uh, either made a bad decision or got, you know, finally got caught with a, with a, you know, maybe a, well, 
more of an elaborate scheme than we talked about before because the ones we mentioned before was kind of just like you know some do though just kind of maybe had a little bit of a gambling addiction but uh maybe this is more one of those schemes like with uh, the nba official uh, like you said remains to be seen but uh, mm-hmm. uh just uh, another one of those uh you know wtf things maybe in his mind he was working with some people and he's like okay if you really know who, what team has the better players then go out and bet on them because I'm damn good at what I do, and I'm going to call it perfect. So if they're throwing yeah. strikes, I'm going to call it perfect, and they're going to win. Maybe that was a strategy. I don't know. It was like too perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too good to be true, then it probably is, isn't. Uh, pretty interesting. Yeah. But uh, uh, another one of those, yeah, throw in the hat. We'll, we got all these stories mixed up, and uh, there'll be more to come, I'm sure. Uh, but it is interesting to keep an eye on uh, how that's trending for for down the road. Uh, that's kind of what we had on our schedule as far as uh, news to talk about goes here this week. Uh, obviously, we'll continue to follow along with the, the CD, CWS series that moves forward and then whatever we get left here out of the, the finals uh, series. Is. And then uh, I, I know we've got probably some other things coming up on the docket, SJ. I know you kind of keep a good track of the, the fight game. I'm sure there's some more good cards on the way, so that'll give something to keep you busy a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple decent in the in the UFC brand, and then also some decent bo- boxing coming up as well. For me, it was good news that uh, the the little Irish man had to bow out again. I know a lot of the a lot of the you know you know butt kissers were kind of upset about that, but it ended up being a better card. And we'll definitely might have to throw a little bit of video action for for the followers there on that one because there's a pretty big card coming up here, and uh, it'll be uh, next 29th, so uh, yeah. just around the corner here. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on that and. There's always something to talk about. There's always going to be a gambling scandal, apparently. And then uh, well, maybe we'll do some uh, kind of, uh, you know, off, you know, maybe like one of those, you know, we were talking about going on uh, just, the, you know, the the rants or the, the shit that pisses us <laughs> off. Maybe we'll have an episode like that or just mm-hmm. get in more to our, our journalism uh, backgrounds there and maybe kind of go a little bit off topic there and just kind of kind of maybe have a pick something here while we have a break before a. I mean, what a month yeah. of football is going to be coming yeah. right at us. College so football got a little time, ramp up. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody gets that itch after a little while here. So I'm sure there'll be plenty of that news too. Uh, yeah. So thanks for joining us again. If you want to uh, follow along with any of the uh, picks that we have, do the, do so online. Uh, we're on uh, Twitter uh, at SJM Bets at Cherokee CP. And then, of course, uh, you can uh, see all the different graphic picks that we'll put out there for you. And then uh, follow along on our YouTube channel. That's where we'll put out those special videos for you as well. Uh, if we make some picks you know, during the week sometimes with that. And then, of course, you can find the podcast there as well, along with all of our other major platforms, whether that be Amazon, Apple, or our main host site there at Spotify. So uh, we hope that you join and enjoy the podcast one way or another. Feel free to reach out to us, interact. If you have uh, topics or you know beverages to suggest for us, any of that, we would surely uh, like to get that interaction going with you. Uh, if you'll hear, listen to the program. So uh, thanks again for all of your support and uh, having some fun along with us. That's SJ Munoz. I'm Chris Parks. Thanks for joining us for another week of Every Day We're Covering. We'll see you next time for some more covers.